Hello and welcome from Sana'a, Yemen. Today we are bringing you a special interview with Dr. Mustafa Bahran, current Vice Chairman of Yemen's National Atomic Energy Commission, which is currently chaired by the Prime Minister. This is the first interview with Dr. Bahran by a foreign source since the year 2007. Dr. Bahran is also a physics professor at Sana'a University and an adjunct professor at the University of Oklahoma. From 1999 to early this year, Dr. Bahran was the founding chairman of NATIC. And under his leadership, Yemen was able to establish the first radiation oncology center and the first nuclear medicine center in Yemen. He is also the former Ministry of Electricity and Energy from 2007 to 2008 and serves as the science and technology advisor to President Ali Abdullah Saleh. He was a member of the IAEA Board of Governors from 2005 to 2006 and president of the General Conference of the Arab Atomic Energy Agency, which was held in Sana'a in 2006. During his, this brief interview, we will discuss a number of issues with Dr. Bakhtaram of interest to the Yemeni and international community, providing background on the current state of Yemen's energy sector, challenges faced by the Yemeni government during this global economic crisis, threats to Yemen's infrastructure, and future pros prospects for energy security and cooperation. We hope you find this program of interest and very informative. Thank you. Good afternoon, Dr. Bahram. Thank you for hosting us at your residence. Uh, I have already provided a brief note on your background uh, and experience as chairman and now vice chairman of NATIC as well as your term uh, as Minister of Electricity and Energy. Uh, I believe everyone is very anxious to hear from firsthand from such a personality on the topic of our discussion today. We have now, uh, we have known uh, this topic, it's on the top of the list of topics uh, during daily gatherings here in Yemen, especially this summer. Uh, Yemen is not the only country in the Arabian Peninsula or the world for that matter uh, whose energy sector has highly been affected by the current uh, economic crisis. We know that the government budgets of many countries in the region were hit by the, charge, uh, by the changes in oil prices, uh, for example, and many face great challenges due to aging infrastructure whose production capacity is not keeping up with demand. I would like to start by asking you some questions about the current state of Yemen's energy sector. In June, for example, Dr. Abdel Karim Iriani painted a very dark picture of Yemen's oil industry, which represents 90% of export income and two-thirds of Yemen's public revenue. With a decrease in production for 410,000 barrels per day to about 300,000 barrels per day this year, how can Yemen's economy recover in the short term? Uh, thank you very much, uh, President. Me, uh, thank you. And, uh, your organization for uh, receiving me or uh, uh, interviewing me in your uh, uh, website. I'm happy to, uh, to answer your questions and to meet your, uh, uh, how can we call them, the uh, uh, website uh, uh, members or uh, fans, so to speak. Uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, if we exclude the political uh, questions uh, in Yemen, this is the most important uh, uh, question that faces the uh, uh, development of this country, along with water. And uh, we may uh, touch upon water at a later stage, but energy is the major challenge that faces us. Uh, I consider Yemen as an energy-deprived country. To start with, uh, even at the time in which our oil production was at, at its maximum, which is about uh, under half a million barrel a day, uh, that was nothing. So relative, all the, relative, this energy sector, the, be it oil, gas, or al so other alternatives like solar, have, have they made an impact on the Yemeni economy besides yeah, the, the amount uh, so that they contribute to the budget uh, as far as employment, uh, diversifying the, the economy? Uh, that's a good question again. Now, as you said, if we put uh, energy, uh, uh, the energy uh, issue is uh, much even much uh, oil. And, and worse on the uh, gas to the budget, the, uh, oil production, the energy sector, sector, which is gas and oil, and Yemen has not, not even participated in the development of the country. To the contrary, and, uh, 
uh, the lack of energy no is the major, major, major uh, reason behind our uh, 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 non-development the, the amount of uh, gas industry we have, uh, we any development uh, whether it's industrial, gas, industrial, South agriculture, South trade, South trade South tourism, etc. All of them, about, they need uh, energy. Energy, uh, um, particularly electricity, is the backbone of all of these they industries. See, yes. They don't, that, that energy does not exist, there is no development. So currently, the poor situation of the energy sector is the main reason behind the energy market. Not the through a, a consortium led by the uh, French company Total, and the government, of course, needs this revenue. And I must say, the revenue will not come the, uh, immediately because it, they will increase the, gradually. This year, hopefully, the uh, the production of gas will start, and then uh, little by little, the share of the government will come in. But other than that, gas, uh, there is no certified gas as of yet. There are uh, 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 potential discoveries. In, another, in other blocks, but these uh, discoveries are not, have not been certified, and the, the issue, there, there will be remaining the issue of digging that ga gas out, uh, the logistical issue of bringing that ga gas together, pumping that gas to wherever it's needed, particularly for electricity. Mm -hmm. So basically, the gas for now is only a, a, a source of revenue, mm -hmm. not an energy mm -hmm. source per mm -hmm. se. Mm -hmm. So there is no oil. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no, the gas is still yet a question on the air, mm -hmm. and uh, the only uh, uh, remaining things we have is alternative energies, mm -hmm. and alternative energies uh, are basically uh, wind and solar energy and geothermal. Geothermal is a very good source of energy, but it's a small one. Right. This government, is, the government is working on it, right. but we don't expect it, that it does anything serious. This is, thank you for mentioning this, because this brings me uh, to a question related to, to the paper that you published uh, this year, uh, entitled Energy Security Toward a National Energy Strategy for the Republic of Yemen. Uh, in this publication, uh, you mentioned, like you said it earlier, that energy and water are the challenges, uh, the challenges defining Yemen's fate uh, this particular century. Uh, you go on to say that a nation without, a strategy, without an energy security is a nation without a future. Correct. Uh, and I, uh, I'm now with your comment with the uh, connectivity of Yemen's economy to the yeah. production of energy, um, do you think that Yemen has adequately benefited from its natural resources, which were not developed until the 1980s and the post-unification period with, for example, Bloc 18 in, in Marib? Uh, uh, let me first, uh, if you allow me to to, to uh, clarify why I think energy and water are the, more, the, the most important challenges we face. They are much more important than political ch challenges we face today. They are more important than security challenges we face today. The, the, the only other challenge that are as important is population growth, probably. Because the political challenges, in my view, are in our hand. Mm -hmm. The security challenges are, we can handle. Okay? The issue of energy and water, I, I, I mean, if you are a country with rivers, with water resources, that's a God gift. If you're not, that's it. If you're a country with an oil reserve, a large oil or gas reserve, like other uh, uh, states in the region, then that's also a God gift. If you are not, then you have challenges that are not 
solvable easily under your command. That's what I mean, mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. and water. Because the solution to the energy is also the solution to the water. If you don't have water resources, you will have to desalinate. Right. And desalination needs energy. energy. Again, right. so the issue is energy. Right. If you don't have enough energy, both for household consumption, for development, industrial, trade, tourism, agriculture, etc. If you don't have energy to, to handle all of these needs of the country, both social and economic, and culture needs. Mm -hmm. Even culture, if you want to have a, a wedding, you need electricity. Right. <laughs> if right. you need to have a, a poetry session, you need electricity at right. night. So, basically, these are the two major challenges, the most important challenge we face. And if we don't address challenge challenges today, it will be too late. Right. And so that's why I'm advocating for a national strategy for energy. Mm -hmm. What are, what is the energy mix we need? Right. Okay. Oil is dwindling, gas is not yet. There's gas, but we, we have agreed that that gas is only revenue. Now, what else you want to do? You have to develop other sources. We, we don't have coal, like other countries. The other sources we have is just wind, solar energy, geothermal, and nuclear. Mm -hmm. Biomass is not possible in Yemen. Biomass uh, 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 needs large areas in order to, to plant such crops right. Right. for energy. Uh, you need water, it's exactly. also a compound problem. So the, we need to, look, to start today, mm -hmm. make, put in a strategy for energy and to look for our current future needs and then implement that strategy in if we are to survive, let alone prosper. Right. And I, I, I must submit to this, to the, to, to, the, to the listeners. We will not survive, let alone prosper, mm -hmm. if we don't take care of this problem today. Right, so we can say that the main problem of not taking uh, an adequate advantage of, uh, of such resources in oil, for example, uh, since the 1980s, uh, the, the lack of strategy then that since, since the, 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 the start of the production of oil in Yemen has affected Yemen more than it has benefited. You, you, could, you could say that, but uh, frankly, there was no, not much oil to start with. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, we can talk about mismanagement. We, don't, we could talk about uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, lack of strategy. I, I must tell you, the, the, the governments that took place, cabinets, uh, uh, the last 11 or 12 cabinets, uh, the, 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 there, there was no strategy for, for energy. That's true. But nevertheless, even though the, there was an issue of strategy or the lack of strategy, mismanagement, but to start with, mm -hmm. the amount of oil was little, okay. and, and, and remains to be little and dwindling. Only gas can save us, but gas is still an issue for the long term. Exactly. If you wait for that long term, let me give, give you an example. The sulfur field, mm -hmm. it took more than 20 years from the, the, the point of sort of uh, preliminary discovery mm -hmm. to production. Right. Now, are we going to, for the next 20 years, before we develop whatever gas we can find, what are we going to do? Right. That's the question. 